UCLA went three and four. The million dollar meal table gave some uh, gave gave some little flashes uh, there for Chip Kelly's team. Dorian Thompson Robinson and most of the offense is back, but Demetri Felton's departure puts a lot of carries on the table for someone to step up and grab. Danny, unless you're taking Arizona as the team that you're squadding up with in the Pac-12 South, <laughs> set, sounds like you're with the Bruins. What do you like about uh, them this year? I like what I saw out of them last year. I think their record is incredibly misleading. Every game they were in was a one-possession game. Um, they should have won their last two games, USC and Stanford. USC, they lost two by five. Stanford was a double overtime loss at the end. I just feel like this team is – it's like Chip Kelly has finally kind of got a full off season. kind of you should – because Dorian Thompson-Robinson was a young quarterback who's been cutting his teeth. You feel like you're waiting on him to make the next step, but he's pretty dynamic. Um, I, I just I, – I like this team. DTR really did take like – he looked a lot better last year mm -hmm. than the guy I remembered seeing the first couple of years. So if that if that continues, if that progresses again in 2021, then yeah, I, I think this is a UCLA team that's destined to have a better season than the one it had. And I think that, you know, that million-dollar meal table, you know, that's that's an edge that not everybody <laughs> else has in, in the conference. But this is – we saw last year like it – I wasn't sure early when they had that success in because that very first game of the year where it was on like the Sunday morning against Cal, it, I first kind of wrote that off like, okay, this is stupid. This is just the dumb result. Nothing matters. But again, as they went along things, you saw some consistency. It wasn't overall great from start to finish, but you saw reasons to be optimistic because I remember for Chip Kelly's first season, like the way that the team was playing on the field and the stuff you were hearing about off the field, it was like, Oh God, this is going to be a disaster. And this was a hire that I had liked when it first made, but I was like, uh Oh, I, I was, I was wrong about this one, but I think things are starting to trend back in the same direction. Now off the field, I do still worry about what they're doing in the recruiting it wise and on bringing that talent in and how that's going to impact them long term. But I do think for 2021, there are reasons to be optimistic about this roster and what it can do. I'm not going to go as far as you are, Danny. I don't think it's a legitimate contender to win the division, but I do think that in the PAC 12 South in particular, where there really never seems to be since USC has been in this down kind of turn where nobody ever really takes this division by the throat and just chokes the life out of everybody else. I can't rule it out. I'm kind of in between Danny and Tom. They're not my pick to win the division, but unless USC takes another step forward, I think UCLA should be in the range where they, they can win the division, right? I think there's probably four teams that can win the division and two, one team that I think definitely can't. And then, Colorado, if they smoke and mirrors this thing again and manage to win the division, uh, that we need to have Carl Durrell on the show for sure to, to, to explain himself. Um, I, I have a couple questions about UCLA, right? Number one, how much extra crazy stuff are they going to run? Because they're like the most experienced team in all the Power Five. And you know Chip Kelly has such great scheme diversity. They, they might have such, like, such a good familiarity with what he wants to run already that they can run a lot of different unique stuff. I'm, I'm very fascinated to see what their in-game adjustments and week-to-week and -week adjustments and changes are. They really might be like that, you know, pickup team that like in seven-on-seven seven that, that you're like, wait, they have no prospects, but they practice together all the time. They run all these different plays. They're, they're really in step with each other. Um, they lose to Mitrick Felton, though, and yeah. he was really good. I threw the ball at him a lot, too. Like, he's a damn good player. I, like, can Zach Charbonnet, the, the Michigan transfer, or Britton Brown step up and be that guy? Uh, outside receiver, they got to get some help. Like, thank God for Utah, if you're a UCLA fan, because otherwise you would have been the team in the conference that had the worst production with the outside receivers. At the offensive line, though, like, it's going to be really, really good. They bring back basically everybody. Sean Ryan's like like an all-conference level player, maybe better. That's like the one – or one of the, the best recruits that, that Chip's you know, got there so far. They should have a lot of time to throw the football. Um, their run D was really bad, too. Like, not – actually a little bit worse than Arizona state in some games, but they bring back like almost everybody. So like, they should be pretty damn good. I, I could see this team really giving people some fits.